Hi. So I just recently wrote a post on my uh, website, and the post was about the most exciting thing on Earth. It's called spectrophotometric color calibration. Now, let's just be realistic. It's not that exciting, but it is one of PixInsight's most important features and one of its most powerful features on top of that. So what spectrophotometric color calibration does is that it actually takes the stars in your picture and calibrates them to the color in a star database. So that means the known color of these stars is what PixInsight is going to calibrate uh, the stars in your photo to. So that's really cool. I mean, it's not like your traditional color calibration. That's for sh that's for sure. So without further ado, let's just start this process. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go to PixInsight's website. And I'm here right now. So what I'm going to do is just go to the download section, hit software distribution. Then I need to log in. And here we are. So if you've purchased PixInsight, you definitely have a login. So what you got to do once you're in here is download one of these databases. Now, I would definitely encourage you just to download the small set. The big set is, well, pretty big. So you don't want to, this is probably about like 30, 40 gigabytes. And honestly, you don't need this as a amateur astro, backyard astrophotographer, don't need all this. So I would just download this small set and I think you'll be set. All right. I've already downloaded this, so I'm not going to go through this. But uh, if you're wondering why PixInsight or why you have to download databases in PixInsight, it's because it doesn't come with it installed. And the reason probably for this is because there's two different sets of databases. So I assume they want you to just come here and download it. It also probably make their download like a little heavy. But anyway, <laughs> let's get on from this. I don't want to keep talking about this. We're going to head right over to PixInsight now. So what I'm going to do now is go to install uh, these databases. And what you want to do to do that is go to Process, Star Catalogs, Gaia. Now make sure Gaia DR3SP is selected right here. So you, you can see that it was on uh, DR3. What you want to do is be on DR3SP. And from there, you want to hit this little wrench. I already have them installed, as I noted before, but let's just remove them just for the hell of it. I'm just going to remove them. Let me throw them in here. One important thing to remember is to store these in a safe place. Uh, not in your downloads folder, obviously. Not a very good place. But I put mine in my pictures folder on my Mac because nobody ever goes there. Nobody ever touches it. iCloud doesn't touch it. Whatever. So I'm going to hit OK. And now that we've done that, all I got to do is hit the Apply button. All right. Congratulations. You now have databases installed for life. Awesome, right? So you're done. Now, the next thing I want to do is just get rid of this nasty color cast that is on the photo. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to screen transfer function, and I'm going to unlink it. There we go. Taking care of that problem. So the next step is to do image solver. We're going to have to solve the image, and then we're going to have to do Spectrophoto color color spectrophotometric color calibration after the image is solved. So let's start with solving the image. Now, if you don't solve your image, spectrophotometric color calibration is just going to fail. So it's important that you solve your image ahead of time. So to do that, go to script, astrometry, and image solver. All right, now I am an image solver. And what you can see here is, you know, a pretty big interface and a lot of things that you probably have to enter in. But there's only really three things that you have to enter in. First off is a date. So they ask you for one date of when you took these photos. Now, I know that astrophotographers take their photos over a course of nights. So let's just say if you started on January 1st and you ended on January 30th, you'd probably enter January 15th in here. This photo actually was taken on um, just one night. It was taken on January 30th. So I actually did just enter the date in that I took this photo. Now, as far as the time is concerned, don't worry about that. Next, you got to search for your object. So I'm going to put in M35 because that's what I shot. 
And you're going to see that it comes up with a bunch of results. You got M35, you got NG2168. M30, uh, M35 and NG2168 are actually the same thing, but I'm just going to choose M35. Just choose whatever is closest to your object. Now, lastly, what you got to do is just enter in your telescope's focal length. So my telescope was 805 millimeters with my flattener reducer. My flattener reducer was a one-to-one -one flattener, so that gave me the full 805. If I was using a 0.8x reducer, though, this would need to be 644 millimeters. So it's the focal length of your telescope with your reducer. The next thing is your pixel size, so or your camera pixel size. So if you don't know this, you could go to a Jenna Astro or High Point Scientific, search for your camera, and then look under the specifications tab, and you're going to find something... Um, for the pixel size of the camera. You could also probably just Google it nowadays. And Google's generative AI is awesome. You know, just put in your name of your camera and pixel size and you got it. If you're using a mirrorless or DSLR camera, I'd certainly suggest you go that route and just Google it. Use Google's generative AI. It will tell you it right off the bat. Okay, so now that we got the pixel size, we enter our focal length, we enter the date, we search for our object. I think we're good. Let's hit okay. This process takes a while, so we'll be back. Okay, we are back, and the image has been solved. And to test this and to make sure that it's been solved, what I'm going to do is just go over to my file and go to Fitz header. Now, when you come into this Fitz header, if this image was not solved, you would not see any information in this Fitz header for this um, for this image. Uh, but because there's a whole bunch of information here, we know that it has been solved. So in fact, if I just go over to my history explorer and I go do before it was solved, you'll see that there's no information in there. So that's an excellent way just to check if your image was solved. So now we're on to the final stage of this, which is spectro photometric color calibration. And what I'm going to do is go to process, color calibration, spectro photometric color calibration. I think I just love saying that, don't I? I just love saying that. So there's really only two steps to spectrophotometric color calibration. The first one is to choose the filters that you're using. Now, I shoot mono. So if you shoot mono, it's easy. You know what filters you're using. You have to buy filters when you're using mono. If you shoot color, most likely you're using a UVIR cut filter or you're using like an Optolong L Extreme. So in that case, you would probably just need to choose one of them. So I'm going to show you right now. So right now, by default, this is stuck on Sony Color Sensor uh, Red UV IR Cut. So that is if you were just using your color camera with an I UR uh, IV Cut filter, which is is pretty normal. Now, if you're using a color camera with a uh, L Enhance, an L Extreme, or an L Ultimate, I would probably choose one of these. So that would make your life easier. Now, if you're using a Canon or a Nikon, they got a bunch of Canon and Nikons to choose from here. So um, that's pretty straightforward as well. So what I'm going to do is choose my filters, which are the Antlia filters. Uh, I use Antlia color filters, and this is a broadband image. Now, if you were shooting narrowband, you would choose this right here. And what you would do is enter in your narrowband's wavelengths, and you would enter in the bandwidth of uh, each of those narrowband filters. Mines are actually three nanometers, so uh, yeah. So that's all you would have to do. Let me just choose Antlia Blue here. And from there, what I'm going to do is make sure that the Gaia DR3 SP is selected. Let's select our region of interest. And this is going to require a background sample. So I'm going to go in, zoom in on my image, and get ready to take a sample right here. And here it is. Here's the sample. And I'm going to hit From Preview. And I'm going to hit RGB Preview right there. Now I'm just going to zoom out and I think we're ready. I'm going to apply this and let's see how long this takes. This shouldn't take very long, but we'll be back. Okay, so it looks like we have just finished. And what happens when you finish spectrophotometric color calibration is you get this certificate telling you how actually how it was calibrated. You can actually print it out if you want. Just click this PDF button, download it. You can even hang it on your wall if you want. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to close this certificate. And then I'm also going to close Spectro Photometric Color Calibration. So bye.
by spectrophotometric color calibration. Now, what you're going to notice here, that color cast is back. First of all, I'm going to delete this preview because I don't like having the previews once they're not needed anymore. What I'm going to do now is actually the opposite that we did in the beginning. I'm going to link it, and then I'm going to hit boop right there. So that's it. We are officially color calibrated. And it really wasn't that many steps. It's just a pain in the butt, I guess you could say, to download those databases and to, you know, do an image solver and then do uh, a color calibration, choosing your filters. There's just a lot involved. Now, you may say to yourself, like, this really doesn't look that much different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my website here. And down here, I actually did a quick sample to show you the difference between before and after spectrophotometric color calibration. So if you look on the bottom right at um, NGC 2158, this one, this globular cluster right here, you're going to notice that before it's a more saturated gold. But when I roll over it and you look at after, you're going to see it's less uh, saturated than it was before. And that's overall. I think the color calibration brings this down to a nice neutral tone. Now, why is this important? Because when you get into doing intensity transformations like curves and contrast and saturation and sharpening, that is going to completely, you know, start making things look or make them come to life, I guess you could say. And as they come to life, you want to make sure they're coming to life with the correct colors. So that it's a very important part of this. Uh, and if you skip it, your image probably risks not looking as realistic as it could possibly look. And this is honestly the best form of color calibration that PixInsight has to offer now. So I hope you learned something. I hope this was pretty easy to understand. And we'll talk soon. Clear skies.